Hi, Victoria. I hope you're feeling better. Um, it was nice to see you joking around with, I think it was Craig on the discussion post with the locks. You guys uh, started us off on a tangent there and everybody got on board, but that was really fun. Thanks for doing that. So I have your quiz here and I'll just go through some quick corrections with you on it and uh, hopefully that'll help you help you out. You did well. I just went through and remarked it because there were a couple of times that the computer just uh, sort of didn't read what what you had as being correct, but it actually was. But let's go through it and I'll explain as we go. So the first question for the number of um, outcomes when you're tossing a coin three times, the best way to approach that is just to write them out and see what you get. And so there's the option where you get all of one and none of the other. And then if we keep working at it like this, um, I think you'll find that there are eight possibilities. H, H, T, and then there's the H, T, H, and the T, H, T, two, four, six, eight. Okay, so um, I think you just maybe missed two and you're counting for that one, so don't worry about it. Okay, the next one where you lost marks was question five gave you a half a mark there um, because you had the, the basic idea right. The thing that you didn't realize is that if Travis, Pat, and Woody must stand together, then we have three boys that can all be rearranged and still be together. So you could have Travis, Pat, Woody, but you could have Pat, Travis, Woody, and so on. And so there's three factorial ways that you could um, that you could arrange those three boys also, and so that's going to change your overall answer there. Okay. All right, next is question 10. If you have five cards dealt from 52, how many contain at least two hearts? So you have to be careful with the wor wording there because when it says at least two, then your hands could be two hearts, three hearts, or four hearts. That's um, all those possibilities. So you have to actually work all that out and then add those probabilities together. So if we have five cards dealt from 52, if it was two hearts, then we have 13 hearts to choose from. We're going to choose two. That means that the rest of the cards have to come from the regular um, deck, okay? If it was three hearts, we have 13 hearts to choose from. We're going to choose three of those and then the other two cards have to come from the 39 other cards. And if we had four hearts, then we would have 13 choose four, and then one card would come from the rest of the deck, okay? Um, so those are the number of ways of making um, a hand of five cards that would contain at least two hearts, and so the answer would be the sum of all of those possibilities. So here's question 11, and you had the right idea. If there's 40 teams and you're choosing 10, but you don't want to do it as a permutation because you're choosing, um, like when you're choosing 10, it doesn't really matter what order, right? Um, and so you're going to end up with repeats there, so the same 10 teams will appear um, more than once in your list if you do it as a permutation. If you do it as a combination, which is 40 choose 10, or you can write it as 40 choose 10 like this, that will eliminate all of the re repeats um, where you've got the same 10 teams, but they're just written in a different order. And so that will actually give you the correct answer in this case. And believe it or not, that's it. That's all you had wrong. Um, so just go back and look at those a little bit. And uh, as we move forward, all of this stuff, we're working towards the final exam um, in terms of, uh, you know, the understanding and making sure that you understand it. But also the Unit 4 test as well. We'll have some of this stuff on, okay? So don't hesitate to email me whenever you have questions. I'm always glad to help.